Hi, welcome back. All right, so we've got some dynamics filled in on our score now, and I'm here down back at the, the keyboard section uh, of the score, or keyboard area, with our poor little pit score that's been neglected for the past umpteen videos, and we're going to talk about instrument changes. Now, the first thing I like to do uh, before even talking about actually putting them into place is going up to Preferences. Now, this is going to be under the File menu in Windows, and uh, essentially assign my own keyboard shortcut, one that's a little easier to access and remember. So if you come down to Menus and Shortcuts, uh, let's see, if we want to add a feature set because we don't actually uh, have one that's a custom one yet. So if we come in, say Brian's set, click OK. We have to do this because if we want to add any custom shortcuts, we have to have our own set so we don't affect the default ones. All right, so we come over here to Create, Instrument Change. You can see there's one that exists already. It's Shift-Alt-Command-I. I just like one that's a little more user-friendly. So I'm going to click Add, and then just type the one you want. I'm going to do Command-I, or you, can, you could do Control-I. I know some people do Shift-Q or, or other things, but it's really up to you. Um, I just like to have something that's more easily rememberable and easier to press on the keyboard. All right, so there we go. And this is another area we haven't really touched on, but if you ever have something you find that you do often, like for instance, I, under here, under the edit menu, there's a bunch of filters that I know I use pretty frequently, like filtering grace notes and filtering all dynamics and, and, uh, and such, and there's not default keyboard shortcuts for them, but you can assign your own. So I would definitely encourage you to explore this area a little bit more, but that's for another day and perhaps another video. All right, so we're down here back at the marimba section. Let's go ahead and play back what we got so far. We're actually going to do the vibes and marimbas, but let's start with just the marimba. All right, so let's say we want this this kid to hop on over to I don't know bells or something. Gonna select here. Now we could come up to create other. Instrument change, and it's going to say the default one, even though I have Command I as uh, as my keyboard shortcut. Let's go ahead and click that. Now we just have to choose which one we want. Uh, so a few things to take a look at here. This should look pretty familiar. Uh, familiar. That's a little hybrid word for you. Pretty similar to the uh, regular instrument uh, menu, but there's just the extra area over here isn't there. Um, and all the shifting around of instruments in there since we're really focused on one staff uh, in this particular area. So we're going to select the VDL uh, template area and we're going to pick the Chimes Glock uh, Cratales family. And let's use the Glock Bright Plastic. All right, so down here, add clef. Let's say we're going from a pitch instrument to an unpitched instrument. It might try to add in a uh, just a regular percussion clef. Or let's say we have someone going from I don't know, perhaps xylophone over to timpani. It's actually going to add in the bass clef for you. So uh, I don't think I need that here. It would be unnecessary. And announce it previous instrument. I'm going to leave that in so you can see that and then I'm going to go back and do that without um, text to proceed instrument name. It'll basically tell, it's a cautionary thing to say, we're I want you to go to uh, Glock Marimba. Now you'll see that it has both of these. The reason it has the Marimba is because by default, instrument uh, if you do a one measure instrument change, it will actually automatically shift back to Marimba. Uh, and that's another setting that's in preferences under the playback tab if you want to uh, kind of check that out. I'm going to undo, let's see, undo select all. And that got rid of my instrument change. Instead, I'm going to, let's go ahead and select a few extra bars. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut this time, Command I. I'm going to uncheck this because I, I personally don't like to have those. I just like it to be right on where the actual change happens. Uh, it'll say what instrument they're changing to. All right, so click OK. All right, so we're on Glockenspiel, and after my pre selected number of bars, it would go back to marimba. Now, whenever I uh, play the score back, it's actually going to load. You can see that it loaded pretty quickly there, the Glock instrument. That's what happened there in that little burst on the screen. So if I come in and let's just add, a, let's see, let's say we're modulating up to, modulating up to D flat instead. So C. 
So you can hear I'm actually getting the Glock sound. So now if I play this back, I actually get the bells to Glock. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. We don't want that kid playing all by himself. All right, so now let's say we want, I don't know, maybe the marimba, or not marimba, the vibe person to quickly hop over to, I don't know, let's see, maybe djembe or something. World percussion. Let's see, let's do just the standard 14-inch djembe. Okay, I don't want any of that extra stuff there. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and just load up the sound. All right, so now here's a little quirk that currently exists in Sibelius, and there's uh, a way to get around it, uh, something I haven't shown you yet. If you come under View, Hidden Objects, you'll actually notice here with an instrument change, there's a little bounding box. That basically just means there's an instrument change going on there. So uh, I just held down Command and Arrows to move the text there. Uh, something that's kind of quirky in Sibelius right now uh, that hopefully they'll change uh, is the idea that if you're going from uh, one mapping to another, especially in unpitched instruments, uh, it takes one measure for the mapping to actually kick in. So if I select it here and enter a few notes, you can see I'm actually getting the proper mapping. However, if I come back here to this first bar, whoops, let's try selecting that bar rest. I'm actually just going to get the pitches as I enter them on the keyboards because the djembe mapping hasn't actually kicked in yet. Um, so I'm going to go here and go ahead and select these two bars, do the uh, bar rests on the second keypad layout. If you just select the instrument change box and slide it to the left of the uh, bar line, then try to re-enter the notes. And see, you'll actually get the proper mapping there. So. Um, Kind of a weird little quirk, uh, but that's just the easiest way to deal with it. Hopefully it's something that in the future uh, they will fix. So that sort of thing uh, works a little more as expected. That's it for this lesson. Join us next time when we will start to talk about the two and three note tremolos and such and how they affect things like timpani rolls and such. So we'll see you next time.